Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. It's finally time to uh, install the DIY uh, leak-proof canister filter I did in the very first video in this uh, video series, which is the 175-gallon uh, uh, reef system that I'm building for a client. Uh, it's going to be filled with uh, two different kinds of material. They're both uh, coral. Uh, this is a much coarser um, coral pieces, and then there's going to be fine coral pieces as well, like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate uh, and uh, basically just pouring them in the tube. Uh, it'll be two or three handfuls of the coarse and a handful of the fine. And as the end kind of fills up, I will um, <laughs> basically just upend it and, um, and get the slide down to the other end. Uh, this uh, filter media, as I said in the first um, uh, video, has already been uh, preconditioned. You can see when all well, my hands get dirty. Uh, uh, it's basically been sitting in a uh, filtration system in my shop uh, and it's been running so it's all cured uh, I just pulled it out this morning and uh, tomorrow will be the day when I fill the tank so we should be uh, maintain most of the um, there we go upended we should maintain most of the biological activity and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a little descriptive shot here this is basically how it's gonna fill up and uh, like I said 75 to 80 percent is gonna be filled and those are how the flow rates work. Uh, the top part's empty, obviously, so it'll have the fastest flow, and the flow rate diminishes as you go down. And uh, what that does uh, creates um, a nice sort of biological environment where uh, the faster flow rate will have higher levels of oxygen, uh, the lower flow rates obviously will have less, and by the time you get down to the bottom, especially after the filtration system is cured for a while, uh, you end up with next to no. All right, well, so we're just gonna. This is the scientific way of <laughs> getting your filter to be evenly spread out. Uh, you just shake it until um, it feels relatively evenly distributed from one end to the other. I'm kind of glossing over. I'm not even bothered telling you about how uh, these uh, uh, pieces are uh, glued together. You can just go back to the first video if you want and uh, I go a little bit slower and you can see uh, more carefully how that goes together. Basically I'm just going to stick these uh, on and uh, trying to make two of them a mess. Uh, if you notice uh, underneath these black pieces there's actually a couple, uh, a couple of uh, pieces of scrap wood I'm using uh, just to protect the stand. So anyway, back to what I was saying is uh, because the uh, filtration system has um, different levels of oxygenation uh, you get uh, different levels of filtration and different styles of filtration. If you, in the very low flow rates where you have higher um, organic materials and then uh, uh, less oxygen, the bacteria use up a lot of the oxygen and you end up with the denitrification occurring, which basically means uh, the bacteria will take uh, the oxygen off the nitrate molecule and use that for their metabolism. So you get denitrification. Uh, you're not seeing double here. This is actually a, a, a at this in this particular clip. I am uh, adding both, uh, um, gluing both ends. Um, I'm not sure why I bothered showing all of this, but that's all right. Shortly here, I'll finish this up, and then we'll stick the uh, two pipes together. And you also notice uh, most canister filters you buy in stores um, uh, are run vertically. I run all of mine horizontally. Uh, the main reason for this is I get like a very good sedimentation at the bottom of the filter and it takes a long time to build that up, like four or five, six months, depending upon what the bio load is and such. Uh, and I don't want to end up having to um, have that uh, bulk up in the bottom of a vertical system, so because it's spread out it uh, requires a lot less cleaning. And here I have, uh, oh actually this is important. Uh, I've already installed the end uh, spacers on so we get flow in both tubes. This is uh, an inch and a half uh, union. This is the cheap ones you can get at any home uh, hardware or whatever, Home Depot. You notice that you have to lift it up to get them to separate. And I uh, don't like doing that because, well, these are hardwired filters, so you would have to uh, raise the filter up and have a way of uh, lowering it down to get the pump uh, separated if you need a take the pump apart. Now this is about a $15 fitting versus the other $2 fitting, um, but the nice thing is, is once you take that cap off, it just slides straight off. 
Um, what I'll try and do later on in the future videos is if I have to do a pump repair, I'll show you how this all works. But this suffice to say is uh, if you need to fix or switch out the pump, uh, you don't have to take anything really like really adjust where everything fits. It just uh, uh, undo both sides of the fittings, and then uh, just slide the pump out. Uh, this is another fast forward bit where we're going to attach uh, a piece of pipe to uh, connect the outflow from the tank to uh, the filtration system. I, uh, whenever I'm on site I try not to use saws to cut pipe, so I just use a, a pipe fitting uh, cutter. It's uh, meant for cutting copper, goes through this very easily. And uh, you'll notice that you, because it's uh, going to be a uh, solid pipe fitting, you do have to allow for um, the, the pipe to fit on, so uh, I'll put it in place, you know, I'll slide it over, it has to be a fairly close fix, I don't want to jack up the filter too off, too much, and then what I'll do is I'll trim off that last little bit, uh, and fast forward, you're not going to see it that well, but there it was, <laughs> hope you caught that. Uh, so I'll trim off a little bit, and then I'll uh, put the pipe back on. You know, whenever I put pipes on in these uh, situations, I always uh, fit them on and take them off clockwise. And the reason for that is you don't want to end up undoing the fitting that's going onto the tank. And then it just fits there snugly. And those little pieces that I was using um, for, uh, well, basically a drip tray for uh, catching when I was doing the gluing, there you go, just showing it has to go up. Uh, they're going to fit underneath that. There you go, they're there. Uh, so when I glue this, uh, what I'll have is I'll have uh, them as act as uh, temporary spacers until I build the platform for them. And then here, I'll just glue this on. Oh, it's a drips. And then you'll see here shortly. What I'll do is slide that back, and then we'll uh, get everything glued up. Make sure everything's where you need it to be, slide it into place, and then just lift it up. There you go. And then I'll slide those pieces of wood. You can't really see it because I have to do this rather quickly um, for the glue sets. One thing about PVC glue is it, it sets up fast. And that's the, there you go, that's the temporary uh, uh, fittings. And they'll sit there until uh, it's after it's cured, and I'll, I'll put in the real ones later. And now we're going to hook up the pump. So what I need to do is convert the uh, three-quarter inch uh, flow from this pump to inch and a half. So that was the uh, bushing you saw there, and then I connect the other end to the other side of the fitting. Now, because uh, these are PVC fittings, uh, yeah, <laughs> that pause there was me waiting for the glue to make sure it's 100% dry. So if I end up, you notice how when I sometimes put the fittings together, there's some drips. If one of those drips tends to um, drip down into where between the in the union there, I'll end up welding them together, and I'll be I'll never get that apart again. Uh, I use silicone instead of Teflon tape. Uh, for putting fittings on uh, this particular uh, the for the output for the pump it doesn't matter uh, but the uh, I find for the input for the pump which as you see is a, a female un a female fitting there I find they're a little fragile sometimes so what happens is if you uh, have to put a fair amount of Teflon tape on it uh, you could end up cracking the, the housing and it just ends up leaking uh, I didn't bother showing you apparently <laughs> how to uh, put the female side on, but you'll see it come up here in a second. Just going to uh, install the pump here. And it just slides right up and try to keep it even. And then just stand there for five minutes while I wait for it to cool, <laughs> or for it to cure. Now if I was doing that properly, what I should have done is just take the pump off, put the fitting in, and then attach the pump later on. But uh, with all the filming and everything else, it just did it all at once. And then uh, another uh, U-joint uh, that I just uh, assembled off camera, obviously. And then you have it. You're finished. The entire uh, filter is uh, connected. I put uh, fittings, uh, little pieces of... Oh, these, sorry, this is afterwards. This is uh, when it's finally done. And I put in the proper uh, braces for both sides of the filter. And because the center pipe is just a fraction, well, an eighth of an inch uh, 
uh, short or thinner than the uh, end fittings, there's a spacer there to keep it uh, so that they're all being supported. And there we go. This is just a, a look at the uh, final product. All the different sides. And that's the fitting, both female and male. And I said the uh, silicone is much better that way. So this is uh, the installation. The next video is going to be the uh, filling of this and getting it all running. And then we're going to put coral in and everything else. So we're getting to the point where it's all going to be uh, more interesting for those of you who want to see fish and such. And for those of you who want to uh, know how to do the maintenance for this style of system, that uh, is the uh, filter and also the aquarium itself, I plan on doing a video uh, series or video, I'm not sure how that's going to work out yet, which is going to encompass how to maintain both uh, aquariums and this style of filtration system. So that way you can uh, build and maintain your own. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, and uh, thanks for watching.